Give Colin a call. Flippin' Joe. Yes, mate, what do you want? Yeah, hi, Colin. Are you filming Swarf today? Yeah, Swarf and Chips. No, I'm stuck in traffic. What do you mean you're stuck in traffic? Mate, I've got, I'm in a really important meeting, and then a, I'm going to be stuck in traffic as well. I can't get there. No, I can't help. Is that water I can hear? Is that water? I can definitely hear water. No, it must be you, mate. It's your phone. Water on the brain, maybe. That's about all you've got. Okay. How are we going to sort it? Oh, I know. It'll be me again, won't it? No. The sat nav saying minimum three hours. I can't make it. Okay. Sorry, mate. You're on your own today. All right. I'll let you know when I'm when I'm near the near the studio. Yeah. Thanks again. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye. I better go. Welcome to Swarf and Chips. This week we're joined by CG Tech. Unfortunately, Colin can't be with us this week. I don't know really what he's doing. I'm sure it's very important. This is what's coming up in the show. And after comments, we're going to be joined on the sofa by Scott Ravenscroft, who is the sales engineer for CG Tech. Swarf and Chips on a Friday. Mark, are you a watcher? I'm a watcher, certainly am, yes. And what do you like about it? Uh, it's, it's informative, there's a bit of humour there. Yeah, it's great fun. And would it uh, ever influence any of your purchasing decisions? Would you find things on there that you, you might explore further? Oh, absolutely, yeah. New technologies come across. Uh, uh, yeah, it makes you want to learn more. Nigel, do you actually watch Swarf from Chips on a Friday? Yeah, absolutely, when we can, yeah, for sure. And what do you like about it? Uh, well, it, it, it's, it's a, a very unique thing that you've got. Uh, it, it brings certainly an awful lot of valuable information to, to engineers. Uh, end users uh, and something I think that the market has you know uh, it's been needing for some time. We really enjoy watching Swarf and Chips it's a valuable source of information for what's currently happening in the industry. And I know you're coming on soon. Yes we're really looking forward to it and we'll be on in the very near future. You like Swarf and Chips Dave? Yeah I, w I watch it every weekend usually on a Saturday I, I just love the programme it's so light-hearted uh, it's a laugh basically and it really is a a good light-hearted look at engineering and some of the problems and some of the some of the machines that are involved and some of the people. The people are, are, are the stars and I just love the programme. I love Swarf and Chips on a Friday night. Tomato sauce washed down with a pint of Guinness. So welcome to the show, Scott. However, before we um, find out a little bit more about CG Tech, it's somebody's birthday today, <laughs> which I don't think he was expecting. Um, so, a very happy birthday to you from all of the team. Um, yeah, we couldn't fit enough candles on there. <laughs> I do. You were born in. There we go. Okay, it's quite a lot of my hair caught. It's in my hair. It's not enough. Make a wish. Very much. Make a wish. <laughs> yes. So, happy birthday. Wish, wish oh. Very oh, it's <laughs> I'll open that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Scott, uh, no pressure or anything, but could you talk about CG Tech, a uh, bit of an overview f for about a minute or so? Yeah, sure. Um, so, CG Tech specialise in uh, CNC software for simulation, verification, optimization, and analysis for manufacturing. Okay, so the company was founded in 1988, and since then we've gone on uh, to develop our core product, Vericut, which is what I'm going to hear to talk to you about today. Mm -hmm. Is Vericut? We do have products, other products as well, but Vericut is the main core product, um, and we are really the global leader in CNC simulation software. Okay, so we have offices worldwide and also a very diverse customer range on a global scale. And so how many people are you uh, based in the UK with yourselves? So the team in the UK is about 15. Okay, so we are a subsidiary office of the headquarters in Irvine. Okay, so in Irvine we probably have around 
a team of 80 people, I would say, based out there that developing our software. But we have subsidiaries across the globe, including Korea, China, Brazil, um, France, Germany, UK. They're just on the team oh, there. there we go. Italy, okay. Korea, yeah, China. Yeah. <laughs> so really yeah, we are. We're quite well established in uh, across the globe with a good, good diverse customer range. You're well established, but who is buying your products? Who is buying our products? So anyone really with what I would call let, let's let's look at our production process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a typical Vericut customer before they have Vericut um, would be some sort of some form of CAD, then they're going into a CAM system. Not always, we have customers handwriting code, but they have some form of CAD, some CAM, and then we go through this interim process called a post-processor, which is the bit that gives them the code, and then they're into production, mm -hmm. okay? And there's always an element of prove out. So Vericut really is applicable to any, of the, any, any customers out there or companies out there that are proving out programs on the shop floor, not sure what the machine's gonna do, feed override, single block. Is that not everybody? Not Vericut customers, no. Oh, okay. No, because that's what Vericut is really for, is to eliminate the prove out phase. I mean, it's a very well established brand, isn't it? I mean, it, you guys, you must be a leader in this, are you? Absolutely we are. Yeah, yeah we are the, the world's leader in simulation software. Mm. Now, um, you mentioned the proving um, in regards to Vericut, but can you give us a bit more of a general overview as to what Vericut is, maybe who it's aimed at, what it's capable of doing? Yeah, so as I said before, it's aimed at anyone really with prove out issues. Okay, so it's not just a tool for collision checking. So how the software works, Vericut reads the CNC program as it does on the machine tool. Okay, so we're taking the machine tool environment in real terms into virtual space. Okay, that's exactly what Vericut does. Okay, and that, that obviously has benefits because we can check the part before we've run the part. Mm -hmm. So we can do inspect we can inspect the part before we've cut it. And we can have absolute confidence that when you run the machine tool, that is what what, what has Vericut said is what you're going to get. How do you then provide something for every single manufacturer? So we would, we would supply the customer with something that we call a Vericut virtual machine. Okay, and we can do that for any machine tool on the market today. Or I would say a very high percentage of machine tools. Kind of like as you see here, simulating yeah. in the background, yeah? Yeah. Right. And how about if I've already got a CAM solution? I know you're not CAM, but mm. there's, there's obviously an element of this you know, in, in there's, there's lots of different CAM providers. So I'm, if I'm already a well-established CAM user. Uh, as in, how does Vericut differ from CAM? Yeah. Um, obviously, CAM, any CAM system has simulation. And essentially, Vericut is simulation. So how does it differ? Um, Vericut is reading the CNC code. Okay. When you have internal CAM, and this is true of every CAM system really on the market, is the CAM simulation is taking place before the code is generated okay and that's an essential point and that is the key difference between Verica and internal cam simulation we're reading the code the cam system it's an interpretation of what the machine tool is actually going to do you're not actually simulating from the code at that point it's got to go through this interim process called a post processor and then we get the code what Vericut's doing is actually reading the code as it would be on the machine tool. Okay, so with that in mind, do we have to sit and go through the whole, obviously here, it looks great on the TV, but mm. if I just want to get to the end result and produce a component, do I have to sit through the animation? Or can you just tell me if there's collisions and things? No, that's a really, really good question. Um, thank you. It's <laughs> fine. It's the first time he's, he's had one of those. It was good, it was good. <laughs> no, and we, we, we generally don't encourage our users to sit there and watch the animation. It looks lovely, it looks pretty, but Vericut reports any errors with the program, any collisions, any near misses, any syntax errors in the code potentially, because they're not always coming out of a CAM system that can be handwritten, um, in what we call a log file. Okay, and if there's issues with the log file, we can look at it after the simulation has taken place. So you can set Vericut running, you know, go and do some other work and come back to your log file afterwards and look at the log file. And if there are any errors, that's when you go and look at the animation. And do you use this in education as well? Absolutely. Yeah, we do, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. If, yeah. Um, hopefully this is as good a question as his, with, with all of the new machines that are being developed in the marketplace from 
hundreds of manufacturers. How do you keep pace? And if I come to you with a, a new machine, do I have to pay more if you've not developed it for that machine? No, I wouldn't say you'd have to pay more, no, because we've got such a good, experienced technical team, okay, and they've really been brought up around manufacturing. So they're almost developing all the time for all new the time. machinery. And that, a key point to our business is working with machine tool companies, um, as well as the controller companies. Because um, it must be massive, because if you think how many new machines are being developed all the time, different configurations, different styles. It's, it's huge. It, and we've got, we got buzzwords around the industry with additive at the moment. That's something we're considering yeah. and enhancing our software to bring into at the next release. So, yeah, it's, it is massive. It's huge. And it moves on at such a fast pace. How about the post, the post processor? Essentially, you're saying this is after the post, aren't you? Almost yeah. post post. Yeah. So you don't actually need to provide a post. Ooh, no, post. because your cam system, yeah. <laughs> Posts. Your, your cam system's got to post process. Mm -hmm. That's how it gets the code. Sure. And that's what we're simulating, and that's why it's so different. So Scott, can you tell us about your new module called Force? Yes, I can. Um, essentially, what Force is is a feed rate optimization tool. Okay, so we're all in a market of very expensive machine tools with materials becoming notoriously more difficult to machine. Okay, so you're thinking about your, your ink canals, your titaniums. None of them materials, those types of materials are kind on tools. Okay, so when we think about force, bearing in mind we're, we're looking at feed right optimization, um, any, any tool path in graph form, and I have some here, um, does this. Okay, so along the top here is what we've got is force in newtons, okay? This is analysis of a tool path. This is what we've carried out. This is pre-optimization, mm -hmm. okay? So what we can see is the cutting forces vary, and they vary quite drastically. So what... You're pulling that data out of the control? We are pulling that data out of the force module. Right. And we're pulling the data out off of a material file. Right. Okay, so Vericut Force understands everything about the material. And that's from your database, it's not up to the engineer to put in what No, that's up to us, yes. We understand the material characteristics. And that's an essential point of force. It wouldn't work unless we understood the material. Okay, so whether it be a softer material, but mainly harder materials is what we're looking at. So this particular example was titanium, very common aerospace grade of titanium. Um, so the forces vary all the way along the tool path. And what we want to do is iron out any spikes. We can see here we've got spikes all the way along this tool path, and that's not good for the tool. Okay, and that's what we're programming really against is we can only limit our feed rates based on the maximum forces. So what we want to do is decrease forward feed rates where we have spikes in our tool path. We want to cap the forces down, but we actually want to bring the feed rates up where we have less force because most of the tool path there's less force applied mm. because we're programming based on the, the worst given condition. So, so there'd be no compromise in the cycle time then if you're giving a bit here and losing a bit there? Absolutely not. We're optimising feed rates. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, but are you optimising it for performance or you're optimising it to save the tool? Because sometimes there's a, there's a payoff. I'm happy to sacrifice tool life to get my component off quicker. Or, or vice or, versa. Or we say, I've got a £300 tool. I'm not in a rush. I'll slow it down to save my tool. But it's a win-win because you're going to save tool life as well. Good answer. <laughs> you do good questions, he does good answers. <laughs> and also chip thickness. What I've got here is an optimised toolpath over the original analysed toolpath. Okay, so you can see here we're optimising based on force and chip thickness. Okay, so what we've done is cap the forces. Sorry, can I ask, so the blue yeah. lines are showing... The blue line is the analysed. Yes. The before. Yeah. Okay and the red line is the optimised. Right. Okay, and bearing in mind, we're only looking at feed rates. We're not looking at altering the tool path trajectory at all. It's only feed rates. Okay, so what we've done here is we've completely flattened out the chip thickness on the tool by varying feed rates. So what's a typical saver, and have you got any case studies yet? Well, in this particular example, we've saved 30% cycle, cycle time. Wow. And obviously, don't forget as well, you're getting an added benefit because you're getting more tool, better tool life as well. So you're going through less carbide with a better cycle time. Win-win. Better for the machine tool as well. It's quite an in-depth 
topic and a subject, how are you getting this information out to your customers? Uh, we're taking it on the road. We've got three events coming up. Ah, okay, I think I know where those are actually. We'll put them on the screen anyway. Uh, but we've got Kaisera Wokingham on the 28th of June, Nick and Rotherham on the 4th of July, and the MTC in Coventry on the 6th of July as well. Yes. And You're going to be there? I will be there. I'll, I'll probably be there for all three events. And yeah. in case some of our other customers are feeling a little bit left out, we're also going to be doing some, uh, some in Scotland later in the year. Okay. Uh, and uh, one in Northern Ireland as well later in the year. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Okay. If, if people can't get to the events, you know, people have different reasons. What are CG Tech going to do in terms of getting this information out or getting, you know, people getting involved? If anyone wants to find out any more, then just get in touch. Give us a call. We can come and visit your premises. Mm -hmm. um, we can show you Vericup in its main form and we can also talk to you about force if it's of interest. I think as well customers will want that in a sense uh, to know the savings that they're going to make. Of so course, they're going to yeah. want we, you to go out there specifically for their machines. We can take your components, run them through force and give you some typical savings and in fact we are doing that at the current time with, with some of our existing customer base that have already shown an interest in the module. And we, we've proven we can get some phenomenal results with it. Brilliant. And last but not least, have you got any new products this year? We're continuing innovating our software. Um, big buzzword around the industry is, is the additive. Mm -hmm. We're enhancing um, our software to include an additive module, um, which is essential really as, mm -hmm. as the technology grows and becomes more popular. We need to be able to simulate that technology. Mm -hmm. um, we're also making some really good enhancements to our grinding simulations. Okay, We have that already in our software, but um, what we want to do is to be able to actually dress down the wheel as the grinding is is in motion, in process dressing, really. Yeah, yeah. So we're enhancing our software to include that functionality as well. And it's not just the two products that we've covered. You've got lots more as well. Yeah, we have we have products for composites. Okay, so and we actually do a programming as well as a simulation um, package for composites and also a a drilling and riveting um, piece of software. VD, Vericup drilling and fastening. Brilliant. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Can I ask you a favour? We've never done this before. No, go ahead. Would you join us? We do 10 videos in yeah. 10 minutes. Will you join us on the sofa for that? I'll be happy to, yes. Okay. Well, thank you. will have more knowledge than us. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're well, out of a job. I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> So the next part of the show will be about 10 minutes. We'll have less videos, but because, Scott, you're here, we may just go over in time. So we'll be, I'm allowing a minute and a half. Controversial. Yes. Is that, is that all right, Scott? It's you're fine the boss. With me. That's fine. Okay, the first video we're going to talk about is the Get Into Gear event that Mazak have done. It's a, it's a fabulous event, really, and it was more specialist toward gear cutting. Can you talk us through the event? Well, Joe was there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a great event. Getting Gear, it was called. As the name would suggest, it's about gear manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the first thing I noticed, how busy it was. There's like 140, 150 people there, all from the gear cutting industry. And I thought there's only two or three companies left that actually do it. But evidently, it's filtering mm -hmm. down the sub subcontract chain. There's a lot there. But essentially, it's a collaborative event between, obviously, Mazak themselves, Open Mind on the programming side, uh, Samvik Coleman on the cutting tools, as well as on the verification side, uh, Renishaw with their new sprint system making sure, but it's basically in cycle measurement, essentially. It's quite good in the sense that Mazak are doing something more specialist. It's like giving something back to the customers as well. Yeah, they're going to be doing more of these. There's the Heimer event coming up shortly as well. But yeah, they're, they're going to be doing more um, industry-focused events as well as their you know, popular open houses as well. I think yeah. it's such a game changer for gear cutting. That's probably mm. why it was so busy. One of the things that I found interesting was the they asked that part took what well, the open mind part was 30 minutes that we looked at it took to manufacture could you do that using old traditional methods i don't well, think you could no i think the processing time is probably as quick or quicker but it's getting to that stage it's yeah. the setup time isn't it whereas a modern day cnc machine tool by the time you've programmed it verified it you know it, 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 it's nowhere near as long and would you, you, yeah cool. i could mean you? yeah i mean we that's, that's a good point so if people want to introduce very cut into uh, their existing process. We have interfaces available to every major cam system out there. Of course, a Hyper Mill BM1. Well, that's a stop. You're not at the time. Yeah, that, yeah, you've got to yeah, stop then. Yeah. And you thought that sound was put in after. Mm. It's actually real. Yeah. <laughs> right, next video. Paul, Chiron, they, um, with ETG, they've got a demonstration tool. Can you have to explain to us what the tool is and why they've got it and who's it aimed at? 
it's it's about learning what the machine can do without actually having to see uh, call it a real machine although it's kind of a real machine mm. really but it's you press the button if you want to know how fast the tool changes on the machine you press one button as I did there and you can see the tool change in action if you want to see how fast the feed rates are you press another button and it, it moves you know one of the x or the y axis and you can see the speed of the machine if you want to know how quick a pallet changes again you press another mm. button and the pallet changes it's a way of an engineer coming along and saying actually I want to see this. Uh, I want to see how fast this is, and which part I want to see how fast. It is. I press that button, and it does that particular. I noticed you know exactly where the e stop is. You've yes. used that a few times. In I, yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it also demonstrates how fast those machines are. Yeah. The acceleration of. I mean, the pallet change time on these things is incredible as well. The biggest aspect of the Chiron machine tool technology is their is their vertical machining speed, and that really is what this this is. Um, this is showing. Uh, you can see there, so the pallet change, the tool change time, chip to chip, about a second or just over. So Education purposes, oh. and it's amazing, isn't it? Is it, you know, it's visitors, in their showroom. It's in we their were showroom. in Tootlingham. It's in their showroom there, so you can literally walk up to this and you can you can press one of the buttons and uh, yeah, and see it in action. And then as I did there, bang, cycle stop, which like Joe said, I've done You're plenty of to. times <laughs> in the past. Wouldn't we very cut? Oh, ah, yes, ah, yeah, you could incorporate like, your, no. your software into You'll that. You'll be back. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Lindsay, I know you were at this event, so you tell us about the Bannock opening <laughs> it's day. It's turning round and changing. <laughs> You've got 60 seconds. Uh, okay. Go. Um, so the facility, it was absolutely massive. Fanuc have actually grown out of their previous facility. And so they've really invested heavily in Coventry for this facility. It's got training facilities. Um, you've got people that can learn about the robo drill or the robotics. There's a big showroom there. There is everything that Fanuc. That's not a minute. Yeah. That's not fair. It's a, it was 107,000 yeah, square feet, mm. seven and a half thousand uh, square foot of, of showroom, and six thousand on training. Is it, mm. is it future proof? Is it full yet? Or? Oh. And there's provisions to expand it by 25 percent. Wow. They've got the land area, mm. and it does. The, you know, you look at it. And how are they going to fill it up? But you look at what Fanuc supply robotics, uh, their machine tools, injection molding, machining centers, EDM. EDM. Mm. All their automation cells, so they're they're gonna they're gonna fill it uh, without doubt, and they're so busy at the moment as well. Tom Boucher didn't he? Yeah. Say, he said how successful the business has been since it's merged from three companies into mm -hmm. one, which is now mm -hmm. Fanuc UK. They had over three hundred and fifty people event, uh, attend this event. Did you not get an invitation? I don't recall getting an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot of industry, uh, lot of industry representatives there from equipment suppliers. Yes. Right the way through to end users. Uh, what they call integrators, people that get involved in the integration of the robots and the machine tools, yeah. um, and it was it was it was a really good. The amount of bodies impressive. there was in, incredible, really and great awesome. hospitality too. Yes, we enjoyed that. Great food, yeah, it was lovely. I had two desserts. Right, next video <laughs> is uh, the FPT, the Dynamax. Now it's a bridge style gantry machine. It's from Matsura, but the, the, the key words that in the next video is uh, nimble, lean and fast. But this is a huge machine, Paul. This is, how can it be nimble, lean and fast? Well, well, Colin went here actually with Matsura and I think the opener to their conversation <laughs> was, Simon said, it's like you, agile, uh, athletic and lean, which Colin is far, I don't know what mm. he, I don't think pair of glasses he yeah, must have more contacts in. Oi, I heard that and I would stand by that appraisal. Now, you may continue. <laughs> but it is a very quick machine. Some of the things that stand out on this five axis machine is the fact that you, the first thing is you have a head changer on this. So you can have a high torque spindle or you can have a high speed spindle. There's a kind of an integrated tool changing mechanism where the head changes from one to the other. So it means that where often manufacturers are looking at machines and saying there is a slight compromise between whether you have high speed or high torque, here you can basically do either or. They also make sure that the Y axis on this machine goes no bigger than 3.2 meters because they, they believe that that gives you, uh, you, send, that you lose dynamics if you go bigger than that. And this machine no is bigger. about- It's pretty big though. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still big, but there are manufacturers mm -hmm. that offer bigger than 3.2, but they restrict it at that so they can basically ensure that they get the most dynamic construction. It's very fast. What's that you build? Quality, we talk a lot about box guideways and linear controls, things like this. They, I believe from watching this, as I said, I wasn't there, but they have a, a linear motor axis in the X axis, but the Y and the mm, Z are yeah. actually ball screw driven. Mm -hmm. So 
they, they're getting the benefits of the high speed sure. technology in the X, but uh, as I said, the good balance in the Y. There's also one more question, sorry. Um, they've got two different spindle heads, one's for rough, roughing prior to machining operations yeah. as well. And that's there. exactly the point I was making earlier. You can change over the head, so yeah. you, you can have up to a 34,000 RPM spindle, or you can go for a, you, you know, a, high, a high torque spindle if you choose to as well. Good idea, there's always a compromise uh, roughing and finishing, isn't there? I'm just trying to ask a question. But you can't. No, you go ask, on. you go ask. Your your, no, I like it. Yeah, go on. No, so going back to the head, is it would it depend on the application as well if you yeah. machine the harder materials or the higher speed spindle for aluminiums? Correct. I mean, the, the, the dynamics of this machine mean that you, ca you can do either or. And I think what FPT have tried to tap into is that there is a need for both markets with this type. Whatever, there's lots of different materials that you can machine. And I think FPT have tapped into that and basically said, let's rather than trying to find one spindle that fits all, yeah. let's just offer a head changer Most where you can do, do one or the other. I'm not sure the time it will take to change the head over, but it doesn't matter because you know some of these parts, look at that beautifully mm. finished part. And I think um, from memory, I'm that's waffling off, on here. That's off your car, that. But they, uh, yeah, they, they, they have uh, made parts for very high performance cars. I think a, a high performance car manufacturer has just bought one of those machines in. Italy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't mind, Scott, if you go over, but if Paul does, it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> okay. So next video, this is quite a nice video actually because you visited the company when they first had the Dugard installed in Loflock and six months on you went back to see, you know, the updates, what's happened, how the machine's been going. So can you talk us through this? Yeah, six months ago the, the machine was just in. The reason they bought it was because they wanted a bigger working envelope in a, in a smaller footprint as they could possibly get. They got some structural parts which we looked at the, their machining uh, for the aerospace industry where before they were having to basically machine one half of it and then move the part and then machine the second half. So you can imagine the, the problems that that can, that can occur from having to do that. With Alignment the, with the, issues. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so this machine has a big enough working envelope to now machine that part completely so there's a big saving for them there and there weren't many machines in the marketplace that gave them the same envelope of of working capacity in the footprint that they needed mm. because obviously every machine shop wants to keep machines down to as small a mm. footprint as possible did brian like it is it, is it the operator but brian? yeah yeah I, I can't remember exactly his name he'll come up in a minute but um he did like it and he actually scored it would you believe a nine out of he ten did. he, he did. did he did also it. i'd like to say anyone who does watch this video it's a great video to show aerospace parts and mm. what they're doing it's quite nice examples in there as well the the, the it's a high speed machine as well i mean they're, they're machining at twelve thousand rpm parts like this at two meters a minute feed rate so that they are removing some material here but you need to with this type of work you know it's all about mm. it's all about competitiveness you must experience yeah, absolutely, this. Yeah. It's about getting the components off the machine as quickly as you can. Saying big, that, big expensive oh. billets there of aluminium over there, verifying it prior to machining it. Um, just, just to interject, sorry, but um, what's really, really good about this, sorry, I can get away with it, but I, what I liked is the fact that they said they were machining the parts that quickly that now they've got spare, spare capacity on mm. the machine, so you can't really... Mm. Very busy company say. as well, though. But yeah, mm. but that when what they do do uh, is they when they buy machines not just because they need them, they buy them to grow the business. You know, mm. uh, they're not they're not just going to buy a machine because they've got a part. They've got to, they'll buy it so they can grow into it, expand. And that's what they do. So the next video is the HK 3D printer, and they've collaborated with Mark Forged. It's quite an impressive video, actually. Can you talk us through it? Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, for quite some time, uh, HK 3D Solutions have been a production partner of 3D Solutions, one of the globe's largest 3D printer manufacturers. But there's always been a, a little bit in the marketplace they can't get to, and that's been um, um, sorted now. Now they're mm -hmm. working with Mark Forge. Um, it, it's a it, it's a 3D printer, what we all know about, but it's slightly different. The, the best thing is the quick changeover materials, and just to name some, we've got uh, nylon Kevlar and carbon fibre. And I won't, I won't name the price of this, this machine, but it's very cost effective. Mm. So if you're looking to produce any of those materials, mm. you need to look at these. So, so does, does this do metal as well? No, this one doesn't. But in the autumn, I think it's September, October time, they're launching a cost effective solution for that, which will print metal. It's a sub £80,000, which is, I don't know if you know the prices on metal additive mm -hmm. manufacturing, but it's far greater than £80,000. So that'll be... That will be a big seller for them. They also said the product it's aimed at, you know, just one man bands and also your big car manufacturers. That's that's the, the whole scope, isn't it? Really? Well, well, this is priced as a prototype type printer, but it's actually going into 
uh, components. It's going into um, supercars, mm. you know, sports cars and things like that. So I, I know the buzzer's just gone, but I do have to recite something here that Steve did say. He said that um, one of the particular parts he had would be very hard to break, even if you were a big guy. Did you manage to break it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it wasn't for lack of trying, I'll be honest with you. I'll, can, I'll show him. But, you, know. you, you couldn't even break no. it, gee whiz. He does mean a big guy then, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, they're mean, aren't they? They are, yeah. They are mean, yeah. You can exit <laughs> One minute when, 54 whenever you want. in the video, watch it. <laughs> right, so Lambrick Chucks. Now, Leader have got the exclusivity for Lambrick. Can you talk to us about the Chucks, why they're good in the industry, and maybe what's so specialist about them? It is quite interesting because we don't often talk... This is probably the first time we've talked about this type of Chuck on, on this show. Mm. You know, we're often talking about high-level automation systems, software, like you're talking about, but it's actually come down to basics really here. But these particular chucks are aimed really at the high-precision medical industry. Uh, they're, they're also um, for industrial app app applications as well. Um, they can run up to 60,000 RPM, so you can imagine the types of components that you could be machining with that. Go on, I was just going to say, you don't see a lot of them, do you? Like, I use one every day on my apprenticeship, but I thought yeah. they'd been superseded by modern day technology. But evidently, they're back with a vengeance. These are like more premium, premium chucks. Scott, I don't mean to be mean. Can I no, ask you, you the question? Why he's got a hex key there, but there's also keyless ones. Why is that good? Why does that? I would say speed. Yeah. I think it's speed. It's also gripping force as yeah. well. Um, mm. what, what is also good about these is you're talking about chucks that are, that are balanced, so you need a balanced chuck for high precision industry. Mm. Yeah, uh, I know the buzzer's gone, but they also have a 30 micron run out as well. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about a standard drill chuck here, we're talking about a high precision drill, drill chuck for all types of applications. He can talk, he can talk, can't he? Buzzer's gone. Oh, yep. Yeah. Romy, what's this deal then? Yeah, I went to Romy's head office in rugby and this, um, this C420 machine is one of their latest offers. Biggest point to point out really here is that this machine comes standard with that eight station turret. Often machines of this nature have a tool post um, and, and engineers are quite satisfied with a tool post, but why would you want just a tool post when you can have a turret? You can get more, more tools. It can obviously be programmed in cycle, so you haven't got to manually change a tool post. And this is their most popular selling machine. They sell dozens of these machines a year. They also have uh, the Siemens control on this, so it's a full CNC machine, also with the manual capability here that you see with the, the hand wheels. And yeah, I think it doesn't matter whether you've got full five axis machines or lower machines, I think every machine shop's got a need for this type of machine, whether it be a Romeo or another, another brand. You know, it's cost effective, it's a full blown CNC, it's a teach lathe, it's got the shop turn on it. So. And it's got a really neat t teach function in it. Mm. And then you know a lot about software, obviously, Scott, but this you can basically, you can machine it with the handles. Yeah. And as you're doing it, it will be telling the control and it will be creating the program in the background. I think with the shop turn I got on the Siemens is really, really quick and intuitive, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and that's one of the things that Paul Reeves, the sales manager there, who we've had on the show before, talks a lot about the fact that even if you're only doing a one-off, and you think you're never going to get that part through the door again. Why not teach, use the teach function, just stick the program, you know, back on, back on your hard drive, back in the office, and at least then if the part does come up again, you know that you've, you've pulled the part out there. Mm -hmm. So these machines are in stock at the moment. They, they, they are doing a special offer on them, and that was really the purpose for this video. Yeah, they sell dozens of these machines a year. We'll put the details on the screen for that as well. Right, okay, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to Scott. To be fair, we've never done this with anyone else, so you've put up with us, so I think, you know, it's a congratulations as <laughs> thank well. Thank you. He had nowhere least. else to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I haven't got home to go to. <laughs> no. Um, so we do give out our swap and chips. So what's your favourite drink? Well, being a Friday, a beer. A beer, right. Okay, well, here you go. You can have a beer on that. In and as one. you managed to last the whole show, you can... <gasps> You can oh, have a beer and put in it as well. I'll so. take that home with me and put it in the fridge. Yes. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> thank, thank you. It's been very Great informative, actually. It's been learnt a lot. It's good. Oh, thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks for watching this week's Wharf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. Now you can't go anywhere because next week we've got a takeover show with Yamazaki Mazak. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs>